Shadow Complex is a 2.5D sci-fi metroidvania that came out exclusively on the Xbox 360 in 2009. By 2016, all other platforms had received the remastered version of the game, which is exactly what I'm playing for this video. As of today, you can get this game anywhere for around 15 bucks, if you're interested. Before we get into the game, as always, a little story time. The game was developed by none other than Epic Games. That's right, the company that got rich by selling V-Bucks to little kids and published by Microsoft Game Studios as an arcade game for the Xbox 360. At that time, it broke sales records for Xbox Live arcade games, selling over 200k copies within its first week of release. Critical reception was positive and it was nominated for multiple awards back in the day. But I'm pretty sure that most of you guys, especially the ones who didn't have a 360, have probably never played this game, if they have even heard about it. One factor is obviously the age of the initial release. Many of you younger guys may not even have been gaming at that time, but another factor is probably the release of Fortnite overshadowing all the other epic games that came out at that time, such as Shadow Complex Remastered. Either way, I can only recommend this forgotten gem to my audience and want to bring it closer to you with this video essay. So let's get into the story. If you want to experience the story for yourself, just skip to the next timestamp in the video or description. To be honest, the story really isn't this game's strong point, as it's very predictable and run of the mill. It's only really there to guide you towards your next objective, but I don't actually mind that, since to me this type of game is all about the fun you have exploring the map and picking up collectibles and upgrades. Funnily enough, the game starts off with an intro where you play as Colonel Sam Dallas, a character who is completely unrelated to the rest of the story, and who is only there to introduce the player to the Omega Armor, the battle suit that you will have to assemble later on in the game. Dallas is helping the Secret Service protect the Vice President of the United States against some sort of renegade forces which he stole said battlesuit from. After taking out their men and taking down their chopper, thinking he saved the vice president, a voice on the radio tells him that they installed an override device in the armor which neutralizes him and the vice president ends up blowing up in an explosion. At least the vice president is safe. You mean that vice president of the United States? Not really. Damn it! Yeah. The game then cuts to Jason and his girlfriend Claire, who are out on a field trip wanting to explore some caves that Claire has apparently been to as a kid. After some cringy conversation, Claire goes missing and Jason goes off looking for her. He descends into the cave and finds some sort of underground entrance. Without thinking, he jumps right into a trap door and just at that moment, some weird cyber soldiers come out of nowhere, exactly from the direction of the huge hole that Jason just jumped across a couple of seconds before, escorting his girlfriend into an underground complex. Jason doesn't say a word until after the soldiers have entered the complex where he calmly says I am so in over my head. Now both doors suddenly open and Jason enters the complex as well. He goes exploring until he finds an office where he sees Claire being questioned and beaten up by a soldier on screen because they suspect her being an NSA spy. Then Jason has a flashback to his dad trying to convince him to become a soldier. You don't want to enlist? You've trained your whole life. No, you trained me dad. There's a difference. I'm not you. I don't want to kill people. Being a soldier isn't about killing. You know that. It's about fighting for something bigger than yourself. Yeah, well, I can't deal with that, okay? Someday, you're gonna find something worth fighting for. And then you'll change your tune. And all Jason has to say after witnessing his girlfriend being severely beaten is... You just had to be right, huh, Dad? Yeah, they tried really hard to make Jason cool and relatable, but they ended up making him pretty gullible and cringy instead. Anyway, Jason goes deeper and deeper into the complex looking for Claire and finally finds the room she's being held captive in. He shoots the soldier in the face to demonstrate the whole killing people thing from the flashback and tells Claire they're getting the hell out of there. But she can't walk because she's been injected with some kind of paralyzing serum, so Jason stashes her behind some cabinets so she won't be found, but actually just leaves her sitting in front of the cabinets in the middle of the room. Stash me behind those cabinets, I'll be fine. Stash you behind Cap- that's crazy. That's why it's perfect. The guy's lying here dead. This is the last place they'd search. Who'd be crazy enough to hang around here? I just wish I knew what was going on here. You know, I heard them say something about the big push. It's happening today. We fell into the middle of something big, Jason. This is ridiculous. Do we look like NSA? What does NSA look like? Uh, how would I know? Exactly. This is where it becomes obvious to the player that Claire knows more than she's telling, but Jason doesn't acknowledge the hint and moves on. Going deeper and deeper into the complex, Jason overhears some soldiers talking about the Omega Armor and makes his way to the room where it's held. Upon touching it, a security relocation protocol starts and swallows the suit, but Jason at least manages to rip off and equip the jetpack. Upon discovering an ordnance factory, he tells Claire he's getting the hell out of there, but Claire convinces him to stop whatever the renegades are doing. Another hint at Claire being involved that Jason doesn't catch on to. Jason takes out the factory and Claire tells him to find 
find the armor as it's their only way out. Jason does exactly that but quickly finds out that the five key components of the armor are missing and he has to find them to unlock the suit's full potential. He wants to get Claire first but finds an empty room and again sees soldiers carrying her away. Jason chases after them and finally finds Claire, who shares the schematics of the base with him and they both get out of the complex. For some reason Claire now wants Jason to leave with her, might be reverse psychology, but Jason wants to stay and stop the restoration as he learned the operation to invade the US is called. Claire drives off in a jeep and Jason finally learns what the missing key components are and can go off hunting for them. After acquiring them all, Jason ends up in some kind of observatorium where he first gets to know the main villain and even he tells him how gullible he has been this entire time. Surprised? I allowed your friend to discover the schematics while she was engaged in her espionage. Espionage? What? Gullible. So gullible. A self-destruct sequence is initiated and Jason has to get out of the base. Arriving at the lake, a huge airship emerges out of the water and Jason has to face off against the commander and his army. After taking out the ship, he has a conversation with the commander, who gets shot seemingly out of nowhere. And tada, who would have thought, Claire's back. Finally, Jason realizes that Claire was in fact an NSA spy. She gives some dumbass explanation for taking Jason with her to the investigation in the first place and they both fly off in a chopper. That's it. See now why I said the story wasn't this game's strong point? Alright, enough of the story, let's talk about the game's actual strong points and the reason why I recommend playing it. Let's start off with the content. The map is pretty big and fun to explore, even if you can get lost pretty easily without checking your map regularly. I can't really compare to other games of the genre since I haven't played that many, but what I can say is that the collectibles are awesome and actually motivated me to 100% complete this game. Every collectible in this game is actually useful and offers different kinds of advantages to the player. First of all, there are the 5 key components of the Omega Armor that we talked about in the story segment. You can actually advance to the boss fight without gathering them all, but getting them makes the boss fight a breeze and exploring way more fun and you actually need some of them to access as locked off areas which hold other collectibles as well. The friction dampener allows you to speed up and run through obstacles, up walls, on ceilings and even on water. The hookshot, well, explains itself. The thrust boots allow you to jump and boost in midair. The inertial element is the most powerful gun in the game and the fusion helmet makes you invincible when you move slowly or stand still. Last one can't just be picked up in one piece like the others though, since that would be a little too easy. You have to collect 12 pass keys first to get access to the Omega Vault where you can get the fusion helmet. There is also the SCHCA map mask, which lets you breathe underwater indefinitely, which is not part of the Omega Armor. Then, besides these components, you can collect 8 health upgrades, 10 armor upgrades, 30 grenade packs, 20 foam packs, 20 missile packs, and last but not least, 12 gold bars. The ammo packs obviously increase your capacity for each ammo type, and collecting them all gives you infinite ammo. The different ammos are initially unlocked by simply progressing in the story, so no worries about them. Last but not least, collecting the 12 gold bars opens up a room where you can get all of your gear in gold, which looks pretty cool. Collecting all of the items and upgrades I just listed is required for 100% completion, just like discovering 100% of the map, but that pretty much goes hand in hand with getting all collectibles, so no need to really worry about that. That being said, I had a lot of fun searching for them, especially because each collectible I found actually made my character more powerful and unlocked new skills. I totally recommend getting everything if you ever decide to play this game. Leveling up your character either increases your accuracy, precision or stamina, and by the time I completed the game, which took me exactly 6 hours and 53 minutes, I was level 21. This isn't a very long game, but it definitely is a lot of fun 100%ing it. As for the gameplay, if you've played any Metroidvania before this, you pretty much know how this handles. You have your standard running, sprinting, jumping, climbing and swimming mechanics. Aiming can sometimes be a little clunky if an enemy is standing in the background. Remember that this is a 2.5D game, so sometimes you're going to need to aim at enemies that are standing further back on the screen, and sometimes the aiming doesn't really snap to them as well as to the enemies in front of you. But the game also features some kind of auto-aim, which helps you aim if you let go of the right stick. You also have different melee attacks, which can be used to be more stealthy in some sections and look pretty cool because they actually consider how you approach the enemy, where he's standing, how many there are and so on and use different animations depending on that info. Where Shadow Complex's gameplay really shines is when using the different tools available to you. All of the items I talked about in the content segment of the video really change up the gameplay. They offer a variety of different approaches to traversing obstacles and solving puzzles. As I said before, some collectibles can only be reached by using specific components or a combination of different tools. And to be honest, for one or two you have to look up a guide as well. 
Yeah. But anyway, the items are all very fun to use and the different ammo types are usually used to open up closed paths but can also be used in combat. After having unlocked infinite ammo, they become OP but fun as hell. Normal bullets are used to break orange obstacles, grenades are used on green ones, foam is used on purple ones and missiles are used on red ones. Then there are also blue obstacles that can only be broken by using the friction dampener. I don't think I have to explain how to use each item and skill in detail as the clips you're seeing should speak for themselves. I can't say all too much about the soundtrack, since there isn't much music playing throughout the game, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad decision. While hunting for collectibles and exploring dark corridors, I don't always want to be consistently bombarded with music. Sometimes the sound effects are enough, but the music that is in the game is mostly either electronical or ambient, and usually only plays during key moments. It's decent and matches the setting of the game, so I can't really say anything against it, but none of the songs actually stuck to me. So, we have arrived at the end of this revisiting. If you made it this far, a like, comment and sub would be greatly appreciated. If you've played Shadow Complex in the past, feel free to tell me about your experience and your opinion on the game. If you've never played it and this video piqued your interest, go ahead and try it out. If you like the genre, I can almost guarantee you that you will have fun with the game. As I said, it's around 15 bucks in most stores and definitely worth the price. Anyway, as always, have a great day and I hope to see you guys for the next chaotic good video.